Greetings, folks. We're going to talk about some improvements to the cursor image replays capability. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the brand new keyframe cursor image change keyframe visualizations that appear on the timeline. So you can see they're rather small. And uh, when you've got a lot of these uh, changes, these keyframes down here, they stack up on each other. A couple things to note, you, you can't currently adjust the position of these keyframes or modify them, delete them by manipulating them on the timeline, right? So, but what they're intended to do is give you a quick visual view of where changes are happening. Now, a couple things to note, I've got the current selected up here in the cursor image replace panel. And so it's just going to show single keyframes. And right now you can see lit up down here is that keyframe right there. So it's telling me that, Hey, that change to this cursor at this time. And then there's no changes from here to this next one. And so I'm rolling over as I roll over it with the, the playhead, I get the indication down here of which particular image I'm on. Right? So I think this is going to be really useful for you to quickly get insight into where things are happening, right? And so you can navigate through. Now, another thing I wanna show you real quick is that if you click the similar tab right here, now it's going to highlight all of the particular cursors. In this case, we're looking at the, the normal pointer arrow, Mac pointer arrow right there. And you can see all of the places in this file where that Mac pointer arrow is the the image being shown on the timeline, right? So, so that's super useful. And when you go through and you adjust to something different, like let's see if we can find a different one right there. You can see there's very few of these particular adjuster cursors in this particular file, right? So just visual information helps you edit faster, helps you gain insight into what's going on. Um, there's some subtlety going on here too. I've deliberately got this really cramped, scaled down uh, my timeline view. And that's so that I can show you one thing right here. As you roll through, and it, it may be hard to actually see this, but as you roll through this, and these are sort of sitting on top of each other, you, you sort of see how you see the jumping right there. There's actually multiple keyframes there. And so we'll, the, the one that you're closer to or rolling over is going to pop up in the Z order and show you that it's, it's the one in the front. Now, if I zoom in on the timeline right here, you can see there's a whole bunch of these keyframes, right? And so now I'm not going to obviously get Z order changes because they're not stacked up on top of each other, but it, it's just a, a really sort of a nice way to, to show you what you're on. Granted, you know, these aren't images aren't big, so you're not going to be able to see with granular detail. And that's because there's a lot of things that potentially they have to compete with. So if you go into cursor editing path mode and we do this, you can see all of a sudden your timeline starts to look rather busy. Right. And, and so we just, uh, we're just trying to give you some hints, trying to take advantage of that metadata, trying to give you the opportunity to understand what's happening on your timeline, where it's happening and sort of connect the dots between this keyframe indicator right up here and what's going on in the timeline, the, the temporal position of the keyframes. I'm going to click out of this right here. So, you know, one thing to note is if I'm, I'm here and I navigate to this particular keyframe and I'll back up on the timeline here and we could go to similar. If I wanted to uh, delete all of these, these keyframes or, or switch, to a different type. Let's say I didn't want the hand cursor in this particular case. I want to switch to, let's take something really weird and obvious. Like let's go with the pointing finger right here. Actually, I'm going to switch out into the Mac system cursors and uh, you can see we've made some changes. This is another change too. We've gone five across. So it's much easier to see what's going on as far as your options for changing and swapping out the cursor. But let's go ahead and pick a different cursor here. Let's go with something sort of unusual right there. And so you can see now I've adjusted down here on the timeline. I've adjusted all of these highlighted cursors to use this, this pen head, this quill, quill pen cursor image, right? So if we get to some of these places, you can see again, here, here's that. And I can see it quickly across the timeline where all those changes are at. So 
there's a lot more that we hope to build on top of this. There's obviously feedback we want to collect from you. Already starting to get some good feedback from beta groups and internal testers on this type of stuff. But connecting the dots between these things, uh, what's going on there, and pretty cool stuff. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy this capability in Camtasia 22.4.0 on Mac and coming very soon on Windows. Uh, hopefully the next release we do on Windows.